and welcome to the best thing you watched this week. We've got Chris from Movies and Munchies and Ruben from the Ruby Tuesday. Thank you so much if you're tuning in. If this is your first time, you are most welcome. And if you are a repeated viewer, then uh, you are also most welcome. I think this is our 17th podcast. If you, We'd have to check, but we've been going a while now uh since then we've aged at least six years i think <laughs> i think so <laughs> uh technology has been giving us some issues even today uh it's it's, it's a weekly adventure isn't it chris always always <laughs> <laughs> i'm very much looking forward to our die hard special which uh drops on december 25th i think a lot of people have been talking about whether they like it or don't like it or even some other suggestions which i thought is going to be it's going to be interesting talking about that. So I'm looking forward to doing that one. But this week, we have some interesting topics to talk about. And uh, Chris, would you uh, also, hello. Hello. <laughs> Saying hello to everybody except Chris. Hi, Chris. Uh, <laughs> is this something that you would like to talk about? What's on your list? Oh, well, yeah, you know, I guess we could probably talk about something. Something. Um, <laughs> just yeah you know just anything uh also as a reminder um we will hit our news and the the items ah, yes. that we're looking forward to checking out in the extra audio portion uh that is only available on the podcast so if you are watching us here on youtube be sure to go to apple podcasts or google podcasts or anchor fm or stitcher or name another one and uh find us there and if you could, please rate and review us. That would give yeah. us a huge, huge help. It does um, help. Yeah. Yes, please. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, just kicking off. Uh, this week, uh, the, pro the top of my list was True Story. It's on Netflix, limited series with Kevin Hart and Wesley Snipes. And if you're unfamiliar with this show, it, Kevin Hart plays a stand-up comedian who returns to Philadelphia for which is his hometown for like a homecoming show type of thing. He reconnects with his brother who is a little troubled. Some decisions are made, which then cause a domino effect of terrible things to happen. Mm. And we get to just see this dynamic. We get to see Kevin Hart make different decisions based on the stuff that comes into his life. Yeah. And um, it's incredibly powerful, very engaging. Um, but then also, uh, not tough to watch, but tough to watch. I think maybe yes. that's a, a good way. And you, you watched this as well. What did you think about it, Ruben? I did. Uh, I was blown away by it. Uh, I, with my new rating system, I gave it five Nicolas Cages out of five. So that gives you an idea. It, it is definitely crazy. It's much darker than I expected it to be. Mm. And I went in thinking, I'm hoping that Kevin Hart's going to give us what he gave us in fatherhood. Uh, but he does that and so much more. And I think part of the reason for that is he's opposite. His brother on screen uh, is Wesley Snipes, who is a character that you kind of love to hate, but also feel for at the same time, which is a very interesting and juicy role, I guess, for an actor to play. And Wesley Snipes has uh, come away since his Blade days. But if you go and check him out on IMDb, you'll see that he has some really juicy roles on IMDb before he picked up the Blade role, before there you know, was tax evasion and, and issues. Uh, but he's come a long way since then. Uh, I feel like, oh, well done, Wesley Snipes. No, I'm not being condescending at all. I genuinely was really impressed with his role. I think he's phenomenal in it. He has a lot of on-screen presence, and mm -hmm. so does Kevin Hart. So when you have them two together trying to stay ahead of the situation that they've put themselves in, it's just like, if you think 24 Jack Bauer a day, it, 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 that just gets wrong along the way. It just gets worse. And every time you get yourself out of an issue, it just it gets that much more worse. You complete, you, you fix one thing, which brings another three things that go wrong. That's what this show is. It's also incredibly tense from the beginning mm. to the end. I was amazed that when there was downtime, I was still tense, kind of on the edge of my seat, even though it, there was nothing on screen that was meant to be tense. It's because of those situations that has happened before that has set that up. So you're always wondering what's going to happen. Who's going to find out? Should I be rooting for these guys? I'm not sure. Are they the good guys? I don't know. But um, there is a third actor that I think we should talk about that I think a lot of people won't talk about um, because I don't think a lot of people know. 
but his character is amazing. I completely agree. I think you're talking about Gene, the character of Gene, behind yes. the scenes Gene. Oh my goodness. So he plays this super fan for Kevin Hart's character. And the guy, Gene, is vulnerable and creepy and awesome, like throughout the show. I mean, it really, they, they build him and then the actor, and I don't remember his name, but he- Theo um, Rossi. Theo Rossi. Okay. Thank you. Oh. He, wow. So we get to see, you know, dur- during, during the show, I mean, there are things that are revealed that make this super fan from the outside world look absolutely like a crazy stalker horrifying just like ooh bad news dude like i don't want to be anywhere near you hmm. but we're also shown other instances of him which we then can tell we can balance out that information with what we see from him some conversations that we have and those conversations are they're so impactful i mean just because you get to hear his heart and you yeah. get to hear what motivates him and wow he he shows in one brief little moment like an amazing amount of character um heart uh yeah. valor almost i don't know um, the, the it's right it's a really word. interesting character because you think he is one thing but at the end you find out he's more than that one thing he is that one thing yeah <laughs> i was yeah. just thinking about the moments uh, that because you don't see him that much, but when you see him, it's always kind of big. He's always kind mm-hmm. of in the background, uh, mm-hmm. I, which I guess a super fan would be. But there's a moment, without doing spoilers, that for me was like a guttural punch. Uh, apart from hearing kind of his background story, mm-hmm. there is a moment where for me, I'd be like on Twitter, I'd be like, hashtag Gene is my hero. Uh, it, and then just blurt out a bunch of emotional stuff afterwards <laughs> and, and, and and ruin it for everybody. But yeah, that moment, I was just like, dude, uh, I had, yeah, I had an emotional reaction at that moment. Yeah. Which, which I think is really good. It, it speaks to the, the quality of the character that he has created mm-hmm. um, because he is, he is off putting at times and he is like, Oh, I get weird vibes from you. And, uh, then he approaches the character almost as this mousy type of thing where he's he's apologetic he knows that he he might be a little much and yet he's unable or unwilling maybe to to rein it back in but yet you don't hate him in this that it 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 makes sense especially as the as you see the whole picture of who he is and um uh, going back to Wesley Snipes also, mm. wow. I mean, the the maturity of his performance, yeah. too, because he brings, he brings an intensity to his role and to his character without having to be over the top, without mm. having to be this larger than life. I mean, he can bring that, too. But there is a, what, there is some frustration that he shows. There is some just exasperation, desperation even. And then, then that's, that's mixed with the brother dynamic that he and Kevin Hart have. And those two together, I mean, they, they feed each, feed off of each other so well. Yeah. It just, I, like, I couldn't get enough of them. I, I kind of likened the tension that the show brought to uncut gems. Oh, nice. Which I, okay. I don't know. Have you seen? No, it's one I've avoided. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, we, uh, it, it's one that you're like, I'm not sure I can watch this again because not that mm. it wasn't good and not that it wasn't well made. It's because it's unrelenting in yeah. that pressure. And that's how this was. I mean, you, we have moments where nothing is really happening. That is, that is piling on the tension you know, in this where, uh, you know, Kevin Hart will be having a conversation with part of his family or yeah. just a manager or, you know, somebody like that. just random things are going on, but it's always in the background. This yeah, looming, for sure. you know, anxiety is just there and you feel it. And it's like, ah, ah, it's something, 
something bad has already happened. What else is going to come? And we just see that domino effect of, oh, and yet I can't tear myself away from it at all. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I... It definitely seems to be one of those that um, is not garnering enough attention. It's something that I want Mm -hmm. people to watch uh, from the trailers and and our reviews. Normally, you can tell like a percentage of that, of how many people are actually going to watch it. And I do hope that that this garners more attention than it's currently getting uh, because it's definitely worth it, Uh, which is why I think it's a good place for our first thing that we talk about. Because, uh, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed in a very intense way, <laughs> uh, if that makes sense. <laughs> Total makes sense. <laughs> and talking about intense, I'm going to switch the genres of what we normally talk about on the back of all the manga adapted content that we've been seeing from Netflix, like Hellbound, mm. like we had recently. I've been getting into manga and it's my first proper f- um, foray. Is that the right word? Foray. Foray, Foray, mm-hmm. Foray yeah. yeah. Into uh, the world of manga. Because I read loads of uh, graphic novels. Uh, I always have done. I read loads uh, of novels. You know, I love reading. Uh, if I'm not watching, I'm reading. Or building Lego, because I'm a child. Um, <laughs> but there's one... <laughs> yeah, adult Lego. I have some very cool designs. Uh, just saying. Uh, Junji Ito, uh, who is... I guess he's a very dark storyteller, mm-hmm. but the one I'm currently reading, well, that I finished called The Death Stench Creeps uh, or Goyo has a story that's basically a script that you could adapt. Like it's a storyboard that you could adapt to a TV series, which I hope one day they do it justice mm-hmm. and do it that way. Um, but yeah, it's it's about animals that, well, it starts off about animals and ends up in another place cont- entirely. Like a horror story that starts off in Maine, you always know that it's going to be mental when it eventually ends. <laughs> Unless you're doing the Stephen King ending, then uh, you, you may do something completely different. But yeah, I'm just going to give you an example so I can show you the artwork because that'll give you an idea. Because we, <laughs> we we did way back when we did um, our animal horror yes. uh, and sharks were a lot in that because there's a lot of really bad sharks recently we talked about the house shark and <laughs> when i saw that like it's not just sharks there's loads of different uh fish and stuff that are in it but like when you see a great white smash through the front of your house door and now it's got legs and uh so you can't even escape it because you know once you're out the sea you're safe right in this not so much but what I love about the artwork is it it tells a story with very little wording. Uh, there mm. are a couple of pages that go l- l- heavy into the dialogue, but for the 99% of it, it is just like flipping page after page. You're probably going through it quite quickly. You might even get through it in the afternoon, even though it's like a contained story about this part, because it's just like if you could watch all the frames together or put it together, you would make a, a moving, a movie sequence, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's that easy, but it's also very, very dark. So beware. If you read this at, um, like when you're going to bed, you, you may find yourself having some very interesting <laughs> dreams. <laughs> but if you are one of those, you, you, you're tired of people saying you should have read the manga first mm-hmm. before this gets snapped up. Read this one because guaranteed this will be snapped up into a Netflix series, an Amazon series, something like that. Have you heard of Jun- Junji Ito, Chris? I, I have because my oldest son has like all of his um, manga. Uh, all right. And okay. Yeah, great. just a huge fan of it. Um, and actually, I had watched recently in, um, I was just looking for some stranger, obscure horror movies, and I came across one of his stories on Amazon Prime at least in the U S and it was, uh, the spiral or Uzu, Uzu Uzumaki. Yeah. And, um, it, that's an interesting movie. Uh, it, it, it has some body horror in there. Some almost like it touches on cosmic a little bit. Mm. Um, it's definitely it, inspired by, uh, what's his face? Uh, Lovecraft. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah, I th- yeah. Yeah. I think you could see that this one. I mean, while I haven't read the manga that it was based on, you know, it was it was good for a one time watch, mm. not something that I would revisit. I mean, not only because it was very weird, but it was also I mean, it was slower and stuff. But they, they did have some some cool key moments within there. 
but I think it it shows the imagination of Junji and to show what he, you know, creates. And so that, that is very intriguing. Um, when I was telling my son about it, he was asking me, well, well did they do this or did they do this? And I was like, no, I don't remember that. And he's like, ah, they missed <laughs> the entire heart of the, you know, the story, the gut punch moment or whatever. And I'm like, oh, well, okay. Maybe that's what was why I'm not like, oh my gosh, I have to rewatch this. Mm. Uh, but this, I hope, I mean, like seeing that and hearing that, I mean, it, it sounds like it could be have huge potential yeah. for a really well done show if done properly. You if know what I mean? If, if invested in it and going for it. And whether they make that as an anime or they choose to do a live action adaptation of that, uh, both could both could be. I think they would probably have much more success because they could do whatever they wanted with an anime. Mm. You know, by actually just because, I mean, come on, you know, you, <laughs> it's so much easier that way. Um, I think, though, about, you know, you're talking about, you know, a shark out in the middle of the ocean. Well, if the shark has legs, that means it can climb into the boat now and get me. Uh, that, <laughs> that, <laughs> no, thank you. I'm good. I'm <laughs> oh, yeah, no. Man. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it is great. And it does make you squirm a bit. It makes your imagination go like... You thought your imagination was weird until you've read Junji Ito, basically. Yeah, th that's what that is. Uh, fantastic artwork, great storytelling, but definitely on the weird side. Yeah, um, well, I think which is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, you you need some that 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 fully embrace it. But I think yeah. that's why you know what I mean. Hey, Netflix or Amazon Prime or you know budding producers, whatever. If you're listening or watching this, I mean, <laughs> really snatch this up but do it right you know yeah. embrace the full weirdness that it is because you you need to be able to capture that in a way that is effective otherwise you get a cheap knockoff that that yeah, doesn't satisfy anybody mm -mm. you know what i mean like it the fans of the show excuse me the fans of the manga or the source material are going to be upset by it and then your regular people who don't know about it are just going to be like, well, that's not good. And that, that, that was terrible. Why would I want to check out more of his stuff? Like the death note live action movie. Which, yeah, I've heard that was terrible. I didn't watch it, but I've heard that that was sad. Yeah. 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 So see, that's <laughs> what you don't want. You don't want to do stuff like that because it, it then turns off people from potentially checking out and being exposed to more of that. Because you know, the manga and the anime from Death Note are incredible. The story is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Enough of our manga tangents. <laughs> hey, that's what we do. We go on yeah, tangents. Absolutely. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's next on your list? Um, well, I... Uh, okay. So Hawkeye came out on Disney+. Mm. Plus. Uh, I didn't get a chance. I didn't get a screeners for it. So I just watched it when it came out. And I've seen on Twitter... A lot of um, negativity, I think, towards the show, which I don't get. Um, you know, they're saying the plot was terrible or it was just all over the place. For me, I mean, I love Jeremy Renner in the role. I think he's probably my favorite Avenger. Mm. Um, and I'm not sure I would have said that pre this. Um, I mean, I really like him and I really like his character. I like how real he is or yeah. real he seems. You know what I mean? Like he's a regular dude. He's um, he's not rich like Tony Stark. He's just yeah. a guy. Um, <clears throat> he lives on a farm. And so they they bring in some of that, you know, the the snark that he has as his character. The And now, I mean, he's kind of just he's done. He's fed up. <laughs> you know, it, he's, he's moved <laughs> on from this i mean he's done his thing as hawkeye and trying to just be a regular person and i love what the show has done by by we're, we're seeing a post snap or post in game world mm. and him living in this and what that means um Haley stanfield a lot of fun their banter back and forth yeah. i really like now i'm not i haven't read the stuff the any of the comics but yeah. from what i've gathered is that kate bishop becomes the new hawkeye at some yeah point. i think she's been prepped to be the new hawkeye yeah yeah and i 
like I like that and I like how they're doing this. Something that I totally appreciated in the the first episode of Hawkeye. So we get to see Haley or we see an opening sequence that happens uh, like during the original Avengers. Mm -hmm. And then they show us the title sequence. And within there is all this animation and they give us an incredible amount of character development on Kate Bishop without having to do anything in just this little thing, because it's just an animation. And so we see her character, you know, excelling at archery and, um, and fencing uh, yeah, and all of these, good. all of mm -hmm. these sports. So now when we catch up to her as a young adult, we don't need to see all of that. We don't need to have these discussions because they yeah. showed it to us in that little bit there. And I just thought, you know what, that was a really unique way of doing that because how interesting is it going to be for us to watch? And well, I mean, it would be kind of interesting to watch her it would just do be it a all montage, out. though. Yeah, that, yeah, but that's all it would be. Yeah. You're right. And so yeah. this was just a different way of doing it. And I thought it was really, it was really fun. Um, you, there, there were some moments that stood out to me within the the first two episodes that made me laugh out loud. That just, I mean, it it endeared me even more to Jeremy Renner and mm. to his, you know, where his character. Uh, I'm, I'm curious at where it's going. Um, but I'm having yeah, it's, a blast. It's very short. It's only six episodes. Y yes. And it, they're, and they're not long episodes either. No. So they're, you know, but we saw, I mean, we saw with, uh, Loki? uh, Falcon and winter soldier, right? That was a, that oh, was yeah. a short. It, yeah. It was seven, series. I think. Yeah. Yeah. And, and mm. I mean, there were portions that felt maybe a little rushed here and there, but for the most part, you know, we got some good character arcs. And so I'm hoping that that's what we get within mm. this. Did you, did you get a chance to, to see this? Yeah, I did. Uh, like you, I didn't get screeners, but I was promised them after like 13 emails going back and forth, going, you're definitely <laughs> getting them. And I was just like, yeah, I don't know what's happening, but okay, cool. I'll just watch it on the day as is. So I'm glad you, you liked it on the best thing you watched because it gives us a chance to talk about it without us having to do individual reviews, yeah. uh, which saves us some time, I guess. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I like the fact that Disney for these series have given us normally when they start, they give us a couple of episodes and then they make us watch week by week. And I've enjoyed that. It gives me something to be anticipated for like mm -hmm. that Friday. It reminds me of growing up as a kid, rushing to the TV going, Oh, it's on, it's on, you know, the adverts come up and you, you rush to make you get your drink or go to the toilets <laughs> and you want to get back there while you, you're watching the, it, Yeah. It's given me that kind of rem uh, memories i can't help but think that for this one it would have been maybe good for them to have dropped it all six because it does almost feel like a movie that they've chopped up into little bits mm. um and i feel like the two first episodes were great but it doesn't have as much action or movement in the story that i was expecting so i i, I see them setting it up but it left me a bit going all right but what actually is going on here uh, I understand that you're, you're drawing these two people together. There's a little bit of a storyline. People have done the Easter eggs and they're saying things like Kingpin is coming. And I'm like, oh, really? I didn't see that at all. Good for you guys. Um, <laughs> it's like apparently it's something to do with the thugs and they're, that's who they belong to. I was like, but mm -hmm. I thought it was the woman that blah, blah, blah. Yeah. yeah. So um, as much as I liked it, I wanted a little bit more, or maybe half and half would have been good, that one extra episode. Because mm. some of them, they've dropped the first three and then yeah. done episode by episode. Nevertheless, I did really enjoy the first two. Uh, like you, I'm, I'm a big fan of Jeremy Renner as Hawkeye. And I think of the Kate Bishop character, I think she's great as well. I think I've seen a lot of people on Twitter as well, funny enough, talk about it as in the light of Die Hard. And I would go, mm, not so much. I think I see it more as a lethal weapon, actually. A buddy cop mm, buddy where cop, they're kind yeah. of bashing heads. It's set at the Christmas time. And, and I think one or at least two of them of the lethal weapons are set during the Christmas time. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I thought it was really entertaining the way they connect um it takes them a while and mm -hmm. they have very different worlds but once they start getting on each other's level there's some like almost surrogate father daughter moments going on there which i really liked also him fighting that 
but the moments that stood out for me is the reflection, and I think this will only work for people that have seen all the movies beforehand, mm. the reflection of what he's going through. So when his wife mentions um, Black Widow, you see the, the torment and the hurt on his face. There's all that package. Like what you were saying, he's had enough of yeah. Hawkeye, really. He's done his job. But I do wonder what he's been doing because his wife has basically sent him to spend time with the kids, uh, which suggests that he hasn't spent much time with the kids because this is two years after Endgame. So I do wonder what he's been up to. Maybe he's been like finishing up. He does have his character that he's been trying to get rid of that persona in the mm -hmm. blip. And obviously that kind of plays a big part. Well, will play a part, I presume, uh, which is fun. There's a lot of baggage, which I think makes the Hawkeye character much more interesting to watch. And then that little bit where Kate, we see how messed up her family is. I think that that works together really well. Yeah, thoroughly enjoyed. Looking forward to what they do next with it. Yeah, I can agree. I, I would have loved to have seen it all as one mm. because you're right. I can see it as a uh, like we've, we've watched the beginning portion of a movie mm. and I just don't know exactly where they're going with it yet um you know you see them setting up potential key conflicts within there and you know some of it's obvious i, I don't know i don't know where it will go or who this person might be even though you know it's obvious that they're setting this person up to be something yeah. um so i yeah i can i can definitely see that i mean i would i would have benched all in one day and been totally happy um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, um, but then that doesn't give them the watch time and making people come back to their platform. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I think this is leading up to, uh, to the end of the year, which then they kick off with book of Boba Fett. And so you have, um, you know, it's just a continual, uh, watching cycle that Disney is, uh, is trying to set up there. Yeah, um, exactly. Cause Boba Fett starts at like Christmas or something. Yeah. Or uh, the, 31st, I think. 31st, right. Like the yeah. last day of the year, mm -hmm. uh, which will lead people into watching their content into the new year. Because I presume they're going to drop two or three and then do it the rest episode. I think so. Weekly. Yeah. 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 You know, with uh, with the series, going back to the series really quick, there were, um, mm. I think something that, that endears me even more. And I had mentioned how Jeremy Renner is like, he's kind of like that regular guy or he's like a real person. I mean, you know, he doesn't have superpowers or anything else. And we get to see, uh, some of, some of the ramifications. I mean, even him, uh, having to wear a hearing aid because basically he's, he's really close to death without, without that in there. Um, you know, and so we get to see how I love it is, you know, what happened and you see that <laughs> these flashes of his battles, you know, things. And it's like, you know, well, it was a lot real world consequences. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And then him going, um, one of the things that made me laugh out loud, one of my favorite scenes was when he goes to retrieve something, um, and a, a LARPer, you know, live action role yes. play. It's a fantastic scene yeah. that <laughs> he is so real at that moment. You know what mm. I mean? Like he's, he's still a really good guy. And yet he's a guy who has just had enough. And it's, yeah, like, it's like, come I'm on. I'm Hawkeye. I've saved the universe, not just earth. Do I really have to do this? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I love, there's a, it's minor, but the, when they have this, this during the LARP, they have that, um, this one final battle type of thing. And as they're doing their sword play, you have some random guy in the back doing the clings. <laughs> it's, <laughs> clink, clink. It's, it's just another layer of annoyance for him. It's yeah. like, I can't, I can't with this. <laughs> like I just, no. what in the world is going on? <laughs> it just, oh, it, it just made me laugh. I mean, it, it, you know, and it's those moments within there that, um, I think that it, it keeps the, the show grounded in a yeah. way that becomes it becomes more fun i think yeah. now it still has the potential to fall off and to to you know lose itself because we've only seen two out of the six episodes and so it'll be i don't know i hope that they don't make it rushed 
you know, well, I've he... seen a lot of people's opinion of it. They're like, ah, the first two episodes of Fall Guy, meh. That's their feeling. I just, I think they're used to the formula. And when Marvel does something mm-hmm. different, like Eternals, uh, people are like, what? No, don't, don't change, don't change. I don't like change. <laughs> um, change is okay, guys. Uh, sometimes you get something really unique out of that change. Yeah, it's cool. We we, we can do different. We don't have yeah. to all be sheep. It's fine. <laughs> we can like different things. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, well, what's the next on your list? Okay. So keeping with uh, Ruben's being random on this week's The Best Thing We Watch, I mentioned to you a couple of times that we've been, from the beginning, we've been going through the Buffy series. Mm, yeah. Um, and so you'll be pleased to know that we are now um, midway through season five. So <laughs> we you could tell we've been watching a lot. Um, but I actually wanted to talk about one particular episode without doing spoilers in case somebody still hasn't watched Buffy. Chris. I've <laughs> never seen the series. I've only seen the original movie with Christy Swanson and Luke Perry and R- Paul Rubens. Oh, man, that is so dated. That, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, it's so bad. <laughs> it's not a good film. Uh, I but love I have, that film. Come I do on. have some nostalgia for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's nostalgic fun for sure. Um, so this one, talking about nostalgic fun, as we've been going through it, we uh, laugh a lot because... Er, late 90s early 2000 i think it's 99 to 2004 or something so the the cgi that they have is just atrocious like when they do (laughs) cgi you're just like what on earth it's tv budget cgi back in the day so you can imagine and then some of the costumes are just wonderfully bad like there is a character who turns into a werewolf but it's obviously a shaggy werewolf costume with a person in it that is running on their hands and feet like it's just obvious uh so you can see they do their best to show the least amount of it as possible and when they're fighting it's like a a frenzied roll um and the fighting sequences get much better because the first two seasons it was like the characters the protagonists even buffy didn't really know how to fight and it was so obvious when it was a stunt double like the 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 wigs just weren't quite right it was always the Mm. back of the character suddenly doing a big backflip and then it's (laughs) cut to buffy with the yeah um thankfully they obviously have learned to do a lot of their stunt themselves as they've learned to fight and get used to that memory but along the way, you're getting sucked into the dialogue that Joss Whedon is so known for. Uh, that's, I, I think, 100%. That's that's his best. When he writes dialogue for characters, you kind of, that's what makes you fall in love with these characters. Is what people loved about Firefly. It's quirky, mm. ahead of the time, but the characters that we, we love, which is why I think Avengers, the first film, people loved because we had that in that film and it brought it all together. And I think he was the first one really able to take all those characters from Avengers, give Mm. them some real humanity, which when crap happens to them. Anyway, so that's, that's, that's the world that we've been living in. Um, And there's a few episodes in Buffy that have won like multiple awards. There's one called the Mm. silence. These really, really creepy characters that float off the ground. The whole episode is filmed in black and white and uh, they basically steal your soul through your dreams and, and and it gets really creepy and the costume design was excellent they really upped their game and i won all these awards and that's like from season three so now we're in season five and we get to an episode called the body and at the end i'll just set the scene there's my wife and i sitting on the couch and we're just bawling our eyes out uh and Bear in mind, I've seen it before. I knew something like this was coming up. It's been years since I've watched it. so And we know it's dated. But we're, once again, we're in it with the characters. Mm. And our protagonists have to go through something really traumatic, as you can guess by the, the title, The Body. There is no score for this episode. None whatsoever. Really? It's like theater. Every character is just raw with emotion and just makes you feel every line uh there's a there's a there's a character that's an ex-demon she lost her powers and she's learning to be human and she says some stuff that's inappropriate to say when someone has died 
but then she says it in a way it's like i just don't understand how i'm meant to feel because that person was here now and now she's not here and then she just breaks down and at that moment my wife and i were just like yeah this is rough man and i was just amazed years later watching some random episode season five episode 13 or something called the body it is a it manages to evoke an emotional response where both man and woman at the end of their week are watching just a Buffy episode just to, because it's easy watching sure. end up being like, oh, okay, are we like, is like normally my wife's, my wife goes, oh, I'm too emotional. must be at my time of the month or something as a joke in the household, but I can't really say it's my time of the month because, <laughs> because well, it, maybe my wife and I are that close uh, that when she gets moody, I get moody. That that does happen apparently, but we were just like, wow, that really, really did an amazing job at showing you what an, a traumatic event of losing a loved one can do, and he doesn't mm -hmm. shy away from it. And what's great is that those experiences, although the score is back, carry on to the next episode and the repercussions of that, what has happened plays a big part to the characters that has happened. And I was just... I thought, i got to talk about this. For those that haven't watched Buffy ever, ever when you start watching, you'll be like, this is atrocious. It's bad. It's not put well together. The script is what will keep you coming back because the dialogue is, is quirky. But mm -hmm. a lot of the characters are sometimes undefined or change the way they act from one episode to another. You'll be like, who wrote that? That's, yeah. Once they get their act together and you're on board with the characters, you start picking up why people love it so much mm -hmm. and where the the talent of Josh Whedon and his team comes from. And that episode, the body is one that I just thought, damn. Okay. That's impressive. There you go. Buffy, uh, praise for you. Nice. How many, how many seasons total are there? There are seven. Yeah. And oh, then there's okay. five seasons of angel, mm -hmm. which is a character in Buffy that starts around season, the end of season three. You, okay. can, you can watch them in conjunction, but you don't have to. Okay. So you're more than halfway through. You're almost actually towards the end of the series mm. now. Okay. Yeah. And we All plan right. on watching uh, Angel afterwards. So. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. We're doing our Josh Whedon. I think we'll do Dollhouse. Can't do Firefly because I've seen it too many times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've only seen um, Serenity, which okay. I know is out of order. but um, It's fine. Yeah. It's a fun film. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I had fun with that. <laughs> well, following on the randomness um, <laughs> and, and the way, you know, so after I watched Hawkeye, I was mm. just, I was looking for something else to watch. And my brain was like, huh, well, let's, you like Jeremy Renner, let's continue on. And so I went back to a movie that I had seen, I don't know, several years ago. And it happened to be on Netflix again, or now, I don't know. But Please don't say Jason Bourne. <laughs> no, no, it's Wind River, which ah. also stars uh, Elizabeth Olsen, mm. um, you know, but um, have you seen Wind River? I have. It's <laughs> incredible. Yeah, <laughs> it's a um, it's written by and, and directed by Ter Taylor Sheridan, who has done mm. um, some really good stuff. I mean, he did Hell or High Water. Yep. He uh, created the Yellowstone series, which is um, it, it, I like it for mm. for the most part it's not it's not the top of my list um but hell or high water i i loved i didn't like the last um his last movie with uh angelina jolie um and it wasn't really her it was just i don't know anyway the, the side yeah but hell or high water as a modern day western is incredible I, yeah totally mm. and so in wind river i mean it takes place in um wyoming on a native american reservation and the thing that because it's based in reality, I think it makes it that much more of a gut punch of a movie because it starts off with a woman running through the snow and she yeah. is uh, just that, she's yeah. not in good shape um, and she, not because she hasn't been running. It's because she's being chased by something and she has been um, she has been assaulted and you just get to see that. And so then it becomes a mystery of how did she get here? what led up to this. And Jeremy Renner is a hunter um, who his job is to basically, um, you know, hunt down mountain lions that come into the reservation and kill off all of the livestock or whatever. Um, Elizabeth Olsen plays an FBI agent. Mm -hmm. And 
the the tension in this is so good. Now it is a slower movie. It is a slower pace, which I think is, is partially what Taylor Sheridan does because he, it is kind of that Western mentality. And this one though is from a crime drama. It's incredibly engaging. It's mm. also terribly sad. And then the the film ends with some statistics that are even just more harrowing and just like, yeah, it's a brutal film. Yeah, it really is. And it, the first time I watched it, um, like I, I sat there with it, you know, and just was like, oh gosh, I, is it that one with the ending? That's like, whoa, it, um, the ending, well, the ending, the ending is good. Um, it, it. Well, it <laughs> it's explosive. I mean, yes, the, the, yeah, the that's last what I week, remember. I remember the whole story just kind of revolving around that moment. Yeah, yeah. it gets to this point, and you're like, "Whoa!" And then, uh, like the the ending is fitting, and I love I love what they do, uh, and I it feels very justified. It feels very real. All of this, um, but then it talks about there's a you know a title screen that gives some mm. facts that is just it. It talks about that, at least at this time when the movie was released, that the um, Native American women were the only demographic that is that they don't have statistics on missing people. And it, it's what they do it for everybody else except for for Native Americans and, and women in particular. And so it was just so it's a good social commentary as well. But yeah. the movie, the acting is so good because, again, you have Jeremy Renner playing this quiet type of no nonsense guy. Um, mm. He's, he's not snarky. He's not sarcastic in this. I mean, he's very, he's very emotional. He's very um, empathetic to, yeah. uh, to the people around him and the, the acting, even Elizabeth Olsen is wonderful within this because she is, she's kind of fish out of water. She, mm. and I love the, how they write her character to be, she isn't meant to be there. You know, she's yeah, meant to dip yeah. in and out and that's her whole mentality. And yet uh -huh. she's not anymore. Um, you have Graham Green, who is just a phenomenal actor and playing the playing the sheriff and the no nonsense. And the he yeah, also has a, I really like his presence. He's great. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit of sarcasm in there, but mm. more so of just being like, yeah, we see you people all the time. You you know, you, you come in, you placate us because you're the federal government or you're the outside entities. And, you know, I'm just the tribal police and I have no real jurisdiction over anything. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So it is, it is on Netflix, at least in the U S and right now. And that one is, um, you know, watching it again reminded me of why I enjoyed it so much the first time. It's a tough watch. There is mm. some, there is some brutal violence that happens within there. Um, I think you can't have one. that movie though without that one scene that is brutal because it's it, it sets up your expectation of vengeance and yes. just justice, and then you're along for a ride, uh, which it totally is. I mean, it's horrific, but it's a ride. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Makes me want to go watch it again. I'm gonna have to go and search it, see if yeah. it's on Netflix UK. Yeah, I hope it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a it's a very good film. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to talk about another individual episode. Okay. <laughs> uh, Wheel of Time, episode four. Okay. Have you seen this yet? I still, I didn't go, I, I've only seen, still seen the one and a half episodes. Um, okay. Okay. Good, 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 good. <laughs> Wheel of Time, episode four. 100% believe that episode four should have been allowed to be in that initial first drop of episodes mm. instead of the three should have been the four. Because the four is where it finds its feet. Okay. It, it finds the dialogue from the characters to the background stories of what the 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 female, I was going to say female wizards, but that's not what they called at all. The uh, And they're not monachia because that comes from uh, Fifth Element. My brain is all over the place. Um, <laughs> let's just say they use Little the one doubts. power uh, and their warders that are with them. And there's this history that it, it manages to get you into the world. Mm. I thought this was a better episode. It's almost to be great, like out of time as a pilot, because it gives you history on the characters, exactly what is happening, who are the main players. 
And then the last 20 minutes is a phenomenal basic action scene and that showcases what they can do. So if you liked that action scene, when you get to see how they use magic in their world, you know, when... She, uh, I said Rosamund Pike, she's mm -hmm. Rosamund Pike. Drawing, it, drawing it in. It's got that white kind of halo yeah. that's big, and then she's able to control it and throw it. There's a lot of that going on there with multiple users, with an, with an army of some sort. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have the characters, because the, the team is kind of split up, you get you dip in and out of what is happening with them. But for the most part, it's it's arc. And I think they've done that on purpose because four is halfway through, I think, because okay. it may only be seven episodes, seven or eight. It's a very short season as well. But this is where I was like, wow, if the series had been like this from the beginning, I don't think there would have been nearly as much complaints because mm. it really gives you an idea of what the characters are about. It feels like having, having not read the books, it feels like it's been true to its origin source. And having seen all the comments now, people have said, yeah, this episode was great. I have faith in the series now, which is, the, I think, people that were worried because they, they didn't really like the first three, kind of breathing a sigh of relief. Mm -hmm. Everything that I wanted the show to be, uh, like what it should be, is in that episode. And I don't want to do, like, plot moments or anything because it's really fun to go along on that journey and to, to not do spoilers for that. Um, but yeah, worth checking out for okay. that episode alone. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to then give it a try because I, I was, <clears throat> well, I had my own issues, <laughs> you were my Lord own of the little hangups. <laughs> yeah. You were Lord of the rings -ing. <laughs> I was, I was. Um, but hearing that, it, it makes you curious at why when they have maybe such a strong episode like this one, mm. did they not realize how strong it was or did they... You know, to separate it out from the first three that, um, you know, where the fan reactions have been kind of mixed, yeah. you know, with these first three episodes. And they're like, well, did you just not understand maybe how powerful episode four was that you separated it out? Because if that's it's again, thing. it's again, the the powers that be want the audience to come to continue to be on their platform weekly. But there are some shows that they should just bite the bullet with and say, we need to put this out all together so our audiences can get the story in a whole because yeah. sometimes those bite-sized pieces don't work. Uh, Masters of the Universe Revelations is a prime example. The first five episodes of that, killing off He-Man twice left fans because they changed so much. They were pissed. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the yeah. diehard fans were pissed. And even now, they're pissed. And so... <laughs> Uh, the next five kind of explains what happens in the first five, but then you left them stewing in a in a bunch of hate and toxicity yeah. for months. Mm -hmm. Had you dropped the first ten altogether, it explains a lot what's going on. And they do change some things, and they definitely still would be crumblings. Because even on yep. my review now, where you can't see the thumbs down, I have like a hundred likes and fifty down. So they're still there; they're just hidden somewhat. Um, but sometimes you do need to drop them. You know, like we were talking about Hawkeye. It might have been better if they dropped them all together. I think The Wheel of Time is probably a prime example of that same thing. Because, again, it's a story that if you leave week on week, you leave yourself in the middle. You, you don't really get the whole idea and you don't really know how good it is until you've seen it. Uh, but then in between the weeks, people are going, this is rubbish. Yeah, well, and it's a it's a dangerous proposition to have. I mean, to have three episodes drop. I mean that that's a that's a chunk of time. It is, yeah. <laughs> no pun intended with that, but you know what I mean. Like that, that is a that is a considerable portion of this entire series. It's or almost half the of the series, so you've done it anyway. Yeah, yeah, and to not um, what am I trying to say? To to have it be so weak maybe, or mm -hmm. something that is not, that hasn't found its footing. I mean, because now you're asking your audience, both new fans and fans of the book series to come back that, you know, you've given me three episodes. You've really shown me, I mean, you have almost three hours worth of content and you've shown me that you're not really sticking to, you know, sticking the landing with this. That's a hard yeah. proposition for me to come back the next time. Uh, and I, I mean, I think that's always going to be a tension that we're going to continue to see because, yeah, you're right. The the platforms 
want the continuous eyeballs coming back, you know, week after week. Okay. And, and uh, fair enough. That makes sense. I mean, it's a business, right? They, yeah. you know, they're trying to maintain their longevity within this. But I think also there's that balancing act of if you can't satisfy the fans or bring people in, it doesn't mm. matter how long you stretch it out because they're not going to watch it. So, um, yeah. Netflix. I mean, that's the reason why I think they'll keep staying around and being at the top of the game because mm -hmm. they're like, we've bought this. We'll put it out now. Let people yeah. watch it. And, you know, they'll they'll do trailers for it. They'll get the marketing out there. Do all the good stuff that goes along with the series. But, you know, there's very few that they do weekly. And that's probably because they share the licenses. So mm -hmm. they buy the licenses and are, are allowed to put Riverdale on week by week. I don't know who's still watching Riverdale, but... Um, yeah. Well, and think about mm -hmm. it too, with, with Netflix, when they drop series, you know, the whole season and everybody binge watches it. I mean, come yeah. on, that's what we do, especially when it's good. Think of yeah. how the word of mouth explodes yeah. from there. Yeah, exactly. Have you, you know, seen you... the show? Squid Game's amazing. What? 110 million households later. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's not like, did you see episode two of Squid Game? Yeah. I, well, no, because I don't know where the show is going. I've seen the first three. I don't know if it's going to be any good. Oh, I don't know if I want to invest my time. Exactly. Yeah. But I've seen the whole thing. It's amazing. You've got to yeah, check it out. Yeah, it started out. off a bit slow, but the ending, man, so good. You wouldn't know. No, exactly. Yeah. And mm. I think that, you know, the word of mouth marketing, that is really, that's more than anything. You can't buy that. Yeah. No, no. Mm. And that's what, I mean, that's what everybody wants. So that. Yeah. Outstanding. Yeah. Okay. Right on. Well, that's um, okay. So, so, do you have more? I do not have more. Nope. So I'm I'm good. Do you have anything else? I think there was one I wanted to talk about. No, no, I don't. It's all okay. Good. Okay. No. I have things that I watched, but I don't want to put them on the best thing I watched. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was being yeah. I was being a little choosy, and it was a there was actually at the beginning of the week I was a little like hmm. I don't, I'm I'm going to struggle for things, I think, because <laughs> there's some there's a lot of things I watched, but not a lot of things that I'm like, yes, I've really enjoyed this. This is a great. This is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I don't want to add. Well, this was this was this just, was this, it this was, was the it, OK thing we watched this week. <laughs> yeah, it was better than absolute poo. So it's going to yeah. make the list. I That's not maybe fun. you want to watch it. Yeah. yeah, that's a recommendation <laughs> and a half there, isn't it? <laughs> Who's going to go okay. into that after that? Oh, yeah, definitely sold now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, hey, we're, we're reaching the end of our um, the video segment. As always, you can always go over to the podcast and hear the entire version of that. But please do not forget, if you haven't given us any feedback yet on Die Hard, Christmas movie, not Christmas movie, however that is, um, you know, we want your arguments because our Christmas show will be discussing this. And we're using all of your arguments uh, for that, which I'm I'm excited for. I'm excited to see where all of these go. I've liked a lot of the comments that have come in so far. <laughs> um, and, and so when we compile them all, I think it's going to be a really fun thing but uh you know hey thanks so much for watching uh if you're watching on my channel chris movies and munchies please go over and visit ruben with the ruby tuesday subscribe to him set up the notifications which are wonky we know with YouTube, yeah. but that's okay set up the notifications so you can get because uh while we do cover some of the same things we also cover different things and so yeah. um you know you can and it's always good to have differing perspectives so yeah, definitely. Give just two. I only need two. Ruben's and uh, Chris's. I completely <laughs> agree. That's all there. There, there are no other people. <laughs> no, <laughs> we're checking. Not biased at all. But yeah. no, no. All right. Well, <laughs> hey, we will see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.